everybody! Welcome back to my another studio. I'm her grandchild Lizzie, and this week I've been working on something very special that can hold either your phone or your tablet. I call it a phone holder, which is a great gift for your friend or your loved one. It's real simple to make, and I'll be showing you how to make it. I've typed out the PDF for it, and I'll be reading out the instructions for you. Okay, I'm ready to get started. Are you? Yep. Okay. Let's get started. the materials and supplies you will need to make the holder. First, you will need a piece of fabric that measures 12 by 8 inches. This will be the top part of the design. Next, you will want to have a bag of poly pellets or a rice as another filling of choice. Next, you will want polyester stuffing. and. I mean a lot of it. Next, you'll want a stiffener inner lining that measures 1 by 5 inches. I'm using a bunker, but you can use cardboard or other types of stiffeners to pull better support for your phone holder. Next, you'll want a thread, thread that matches your fabric, a sewing needle, a pair of scissors, that purple thing, a quilter's grid, a fabric erasable marker, a homemade funnel made by my nana, pins, a bowl, an eight ounce water ball, empty the water ball first, an iron, And a sewing machine. The fabric has already been cut, so let's get started with the next step. The next thing you want to do is fold the fabric in half, right sides together, measuring 6 by 8 inches. This will be the top part of the holder. Out of the bottom line, you're going to cut a small notch right at the corner. Right here. Taking my pair of scissors, I'm going to cut a tiny notch right here. Snip. And there you go. Now, with a quilter spread and a fabric erasable marker, I'm going to make a 1 4 inch marking along the top edge. and down along the side. Taking it like this, I'm going to make a 2.5 inch opening with a quilter grid and once again a fabric erasable marker. I'm going to mark down 2.5 inches and make a mark here and another to the 5 inch marking here. This will be the opening where I can turn the fabric in, in right side out. Now, by putting a couple of pens in, make sure the folds of the fabric are together. Again, I'm gonna sew along the uh, along the edge, along here and here. But I'm gonna leave this unstitched. Now at the machine, I'm going to sew my seam. First thing I want to do is to secure this, this top it, corner right here is with a back tack. And the back tack down here.
take this out. Sit here. And start working along here. First, you gotta and do a back tack here and down here. But I'm gonna do a back tack right here so I don't sew along the opening. Now we're gonna lightly press the seams open. Now for this, when, when it comes to the iron, you may want to have dull supervision because you do not want to be burned by the iron. So Nana, can you come over here and help with this? I can. I'm happy to help you. All right, well let's turn everything over and we'll get a close up so we can open up the seams, okay? Yeah, so you, like this. Yeah. And you might want, now the most important thing you want to do is match the seam up with the knot. The notch. Open the seams and make sure it's centered with the notch. Right along here. Now switching over to Nana. Okay. And I'm just going to just take my fingers and just open up this seam. It's a little seam, so it can be a little fussy, but you can just press it, open it up and just press it open. And sometimes fabric you can finger press. And if you can, if you don't have to use iron, don't. And then you can see right here is the opening um, that we use to turn the fabric right side out. All right, I'm going to try to press the top seam. Let's get it folded just right. And again, I'm just going to take my fingers and open up the seam. And with the iron, Again, it's a little fussy, and just give it a little press. That's about all you need. It just helps when you turn. Okay. There we go. Now your seams that are lightly pressed, it's time to take the fabric erasable marker and mark a one fourth inch seam along the bottom. With a quilter's grid, I'm gonna mark the one fourth inch line this will be the front edge of the holder. Make sure that the line is darkened. So you're putting in a couple of pins. I'm going to take it to the machine and sew the one fourth inch line. Now that I stitched the bomb, I'm going to turn the thing right side out. Almost got it. Now taking the purple thing, you, you're going to use this to poke your corners out, but not too hard. You might want to do it carefully. Okay. Now, you want to make sure your corners are poked right, like straight out, but not too much out, like, like this. Now you're going to have a, an adult do the ironing to iron the seams out. Do you want to show them, Nana? Sure. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my front seam is nice and flat. Give it a press. And then I'm going to go ahead and just turn it on the side and uh, make sure that the seam is you know, pushed out a little bit. And give that just a little bit of a press as well. Nice crisp look. Okay. There you go. Back to you. Okay. Now, with a quilter's grid and a fabric erasable marker, starting at the front edge, make a line one and a half inches up, and the other two and a half inches up. On the front line, I'm going to mark for a two inch opening. One here, and the other here, making, making sure it's two inches. Now I'm going to stitch along the first line. 
but I'm going to leave a 2 inch opening so I can be able to insert the stuffing. And we're going to secure both sides with a back tack. Now that I stitch, but with the 2 inch opening unstitched, I'll be taking the polyester stuffing and stuff it. Boy, you get in there. Careful when stuffing, it, then make sure the thread, the, the seam does not come undone. You can either take your finger or or this to push the stuffing in. Using your thumb, you can tightly it tightly stuff the corners as well. Now the last thing I did, I just did, well, the first one I did, I only used my fingers and then use the thing here. It might take a little bit of time, so please be patient and make sure the stuff it gets in and make sure it's, that the thing along here is stuffed enough. It fills in that stuff you, as best you can. And if I keep talking like this, my voice is gonna be gone. I think this is stuffed enough, don't you think, Nana? Yes, I do. Now we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and stitch along the, the two inch marking. Along here. Now before we can stitch the two inch opening, we're gonna replace the sewing machine's foot original foot with the zipper foot. The zipper foot will allow us to get close to the two inch opening. Now with the two inch opening closed up, it's time to and the stiff board, which I call out of this cloud. It could be a, it could be cardboard, stiffer lining, or anything that be like sturdier. This is actually an optional choice. You don't have to put this in if you, if you don't want to, but but I think it, I I find it important to put put it in because it gives the phone gives the phone holder better support. Now I'm using buckram in this. I can just get it in. Oh. <laughs> now that I pushed the stiffener up against the seam, now that it's in place, I'm going to stitch along the two and a half inch marking. Right along here. Oh, before I forget. <laughs> Change the, you might want to change the sewing machine's foot uh, back to the original foot and center the needle back to the center. And be sure to back be sure to secure this the four with the back tack. Now, now that the thing is secured with the back tack, it's time to stop. Now let's get everything ready to stuff the holder. You will need your poly pellets, polyester stuffing, your purple thing, purple thing, a bowl, a water bottle or a measuring cup, and a homemade funnel. 
you know, can you come in and step in and help us with this? Because it takes two, one or two people. Sure, I can do that. And um, also, while you're here, can you explain how you, how you made this? <laughs> I sure can. <laughs> well, first of all, um, Lizzie was smart enough to know that it is very difficult to get these pellets, or you can use rice if you want to, into this small opening. So we have this water bottle um, hanging around that we, we get ready to throw it away, and it will hold about a cup of the pellets. And that's exactly what you need to put inside of your holder. Right, Liz? Right, because we don't have any measuring cups. Yeah, we don't have measuring cups here. So, so this is perfect. So um, she carefully put the water bottle in here, and we cut just a little slit into the, the pellet bag. Yeah, but it's already cut. Well, yeah, because I had cut it for another project. And then you just carefully pour this into here. Okay. Now, the bowl will hold the... Well, make sure the bees don't, come, don't fall to the or or else they'll spread everywhere. Exactly. Like, whoosh! <laughs> exactly. The pellets will go everywhere. So it's really great to have, make sure you have a bowl here to catch all the extra pellets, right? Right. Because they'll be all over the floor. We know that, don't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you don't have a little water bottle, then you can certainly um, take your, your pellets or your rice um, and... You can make a your own little funnel. Now we do have a regular funnel, but we found that whenever we put it through a regular water funnel, yeah. right, it just it just they all just, just jammed up. They got stuck. Yeah, and we we try everything. We use the purple thing and try to poke it out, like. Yeah, and they still got stuck. So I just took a three by five. This is just a little three by five card, and just rolled it up and put a piece of tape on it to make a funnel. This way I could insert it right into the, um, the opening in the holder, and then you can pull your pellets right in. makes it easier. And you can also use a measuring cup if you want to. And again, we use about a cup of the pellets. Now, what's great about the water bottle is that it holds about one cup, just exactly what we need. Now, we have found that using the bottle, if you have one, uh, makes it easier and all we really have to do again is making sure it's in that bowl to catch all the pellets because they'll go all over the place and you can just easily pour them in. Yeah, you may need extra hands on this one. Yeah, you do, don't you? Yep. It really does help. And just kind of keep, you know, shaking it down in there and it will fill up that pouch area nicely. There you go. I think we got them all. Shake it a little bit. Shake, shake, shake. That's right. Okay, and then we can start stuffing it with the uh, polyester poly stuffing. Mm -hmm. Polyester stuffing, and just take uh, take a little bit at a time, and take your time. The first few pieces that you put in um, go easy because, as you can see here, the pellets want to fall out a little bit. Yeah. So. But we'll catch them in a minute. So, once again, extra hands. That's right. And make sure the pellets don't fall out. Yeah, they might. Okay. And then I'm going to oh, let's see, push it in, and I'm going to use my finger. Or thumb. Yeah. Thumbs work well in stuffing. Catch that pellet. Yeah. <laughs> don't let it fly. And then just get some more stuffing. Yeah. And uh, just, like it's a little bit at a time in the beginning. And just use your finger and you'll begin to push it in and then you want to make sure that you um, fill in those um, all the corners and all the ends. Yeah. This is really going to add the weight um, that we need to hold the phone or the tablet. Okay, yeah, push it in there. Yeah. And we're just going to keep using our fingers. Or thumb. Or, <laughs> yeah, use those thumbs and get those corners too. We don't want to leave those out. And just push. Push, push. Yeah. And you'll see the pellets will kind of go to the other side, but that's okay. And you can maneuver them around uh, when, after you sew up the back. Okay, I'm going to keep pushing this in. Um, and you'll know when to when it's full because it'll be, it'll be nice and firm. Yep. And you're going to use the purple thing, and it has a flat end, and it also has a pointy end. So I'm going to use the um, flat end to kind of push it into those those corners there. Yeah. Got 
more palettes for me. There you go. Now, when with coming when it comes to stuffing the polyester stuffing in the thing, your mom put you put a lot of work into it by using your thumb by doing like like a push turn motion like what I'm doing right now. So this is how I do it. You did a good job at this. Thank you. <laughs> then I'll just kind of finish it up a little bit. Yeah, see how I'm stuffing that, that corner? Mm -hmm. Making it nice and firm in there. Yeah. Just give it a good poke. Yep. Once again, make sure the beads don't fall out. Yeah. Like this this one here. Yeah, they just want to get away from us. I just want to stick to my thumb. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to get that top point. Try and get the bead in there. Mm -hmm. There's another one. Yep. And another. Yep. So getting them in there. Okay. Boop, boop. I think we've got it. I don't think we need any more oh. in there. There, there we oh. go. Wait. There. There you go. That should do it. It should. Okay. I think we've got it stuffed. And one more poke into that top. There. There we go. Using my thumb. All right. Now? I think, give it a nice little pull and look at the front and you can uh, kind of feel it and you can, it almost feels like a bean bag. Okay, feels great. All right, now? It's time to stitch. It is time to do that ladder stitch and close up that opening that you have left in the back. Yep. Alright, now that I got my needle threaded with two strands of thread, I'm going to begin the liar stitch. So as we're starting, I'm going to take my needle in, in order to hide the knot. I'm going to pull up like this. Make sure the thread is straightened. And you're hiding your knot, aren't and you're you? Hiding your knot. Mm -hmm. And like so, you're gonna start at the side and at at least a quarter, like one eighth an inch. Yep, you're gonna pick up just the uh, crease of that fold of that seam, right? Right. Yep, and you're going to just pick up. You, you like about an eighth of an inch. You know, you can do an eighth to a quarter. Yeah. And you're just gonna pick it up. And push. Yep, yeah, push it up. Yeah, I prefer the eighth to the quarter better than the one fourth. And okay. oh, there's a couple of fibers stuck in there, so be sure to not to capture any fibers from the table. Yeah, if you could do, that's just some of the polyester batting that you picked up. If well, that's just for the table, actually. Oh, okay. Just snip it off of there. That's okay. Yeah, just take a pair of small scissors and make be and carefully cut up the cut up, cut up, cut the fibers and not the thread. That's right, there you go. And like so, pull the thread. Be sure it's not tangled up like this. And now you're going to go to the other side. That's right. And you're going to pick up another eighth of an inch. Yep. And you're going to run the thread back and forth. Back and forth. Because it looks like the rungs of a ladder. And that's why they call it the ladder stitch, right? Right. A little precision. Just carefully not to stab your your fingers, because that will be bad. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now we can see it. And you pull you're pulling your needle straight down. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. And you're leaving your finger there to keep it from tangling up, right? Right. Okay, give it a little pull. Yep. And then you pull. You almost need something to lean it on, right? Right. Then you're going to go to the other side and pick up another piece of the fabric. And like I said, after about four or five stitches, you're going to pull. Yep. Get tight. Okay. And then you're just going to keep doing that. 
all the way to the bottom. Yeah, you see the ladder stitch. Now, now you continue on and make and make sure you get all the way to the end. Yep. Okay. Almost to the end, you can see the letter stitch closes the opening really nice. I pulled the thread tight to close up the seam. Now I'm gonna knot it. Nana, I'm gonna need your help with this, please. Okay, yep, yeah, good. I'm gonna give it the final pull. And I can help you knot it off. And then what I'm going to do is make a little knot. Make sure it's nice and pulled tight so it closes up that seam. See how nice it looks? You can't even tell you've done stitching. Okay. And since you've already put your... Okay, yep. I'm just going to run the needle right up here and just give it one more knot. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to run the needle right there close by the, where the knot is. Poke it into the, that, the filling and then let it come out about an inch and a half up. It doesn't matter what comes out. And I'm gonna pull it tight and then very carefully, very carefully, I am going to snip that thread. Don't catch the fabric. And once you do that, the thread hides in the inside. It's like magic, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All right. And then we're going to go along and we can... Um, Snip off the Essex. Uh-huh. And then you can uh, erase all of your purple. And then turn it over and give it a good look. And then you can maneuver all your stuffing around too. Lizzie, you certainly have done a great job at making this holder. And, you know, I think what's great about these holders is that you can make them out of just any fabric. Um, you, we have figured it out. And for all of you um, who use fat quarters, you can actually get three of them out of a fat quarter. So that's pretty great, right? Right. Now, you can also make them out of cork, as you see here. This one here is um, out of a cork fabric, and it's and it's very durable and probably easy to wash off. So you can use cork, or you could probably use you know a piece of vinyl if you wanted to, right? I even have some leather a uh, leather hide in there. Maybe we could try some leather hide. Does that sound good to you? I can't handle leather. <laughs> okay. I have the cork. I didn't even make that one. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. And I hope you learned something good from it. And I can't wait to see the creations you made. Made. And don't forget to like, comment, sus and subscribe. <laughs> You're so great at this, Lindsay. Thank you, everyone. Again, I want to I want to say too. Thank you for uh, watching this video. Lizzie has done a fabulous job. But I also want to add that perhaps you've seen something very special about Lizzie. Well, if you have, you're right. She's very talented. She's smart. She's courageous. 
She's determined. And she doesn't let autism stop her at all. Not at all. <laughs> and I think you know something special about my Nana here. She is nuts and she doesn't like getting in the way. I love you too, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun, folks. I hope you enjoy and show us your creations out there. All right. Until next time. Bug out. Peace. Ciao for now. You did it. You knocked it out of the park. Yeah. <laughs> Is it good? Mm -hmm.